Okay. Welcome to Burned 01's tutorials on vectoring. Um, I'm going to be doing a few tutorials um, with each vectoring program, including Photoshop. Um, because I'm unhappy with some of the other um, vectoring tutorials out there, probably one of the best is by Orange L, but that's still only for Photoshop. So what I'm going to be going over in this next few videos is basically just how to vector with um, all three of the major vector programs, um, starting with Inkscape. Um, now, uh, if you don't already know, um, a quick definition of what a vector is. Um, a vector is basically an image that never loses resolution. And if you don't really know what that means, basically an image, which is what I have here on the right of my little uh, OC or Pony Sono, whatever you want to call it, um, this is a PNG or a picture. And then on here on the left is an SVG made out of shapes. And an SVGs are always made out of shapes. And sh uh, shapes are can also are made out of shapes and strokes, excuse me. So if we zoom in on the picture on the right, you'll notice it's very pixelated. If you look at the eye, see all these squares, those are pixels. So an image or PNG is made out of pixels and colored squares, whereas an SVG, if we go zoom on it, it is made out of lines and all these individual little shapes that are all overlapping each other. Um, if I select this for you, bam. It's all made out of shapes, paths, nodes, and strokes. Um, I'll describe what each one of those is in a second. But point being, this one I can stretch and scale to any size, 10,000 pixels, a million pixels, what have you, and will always have beautiful, beautiful outlines and just super crisp edges all the way around. Whereas this one, if I try to stretch it, it's going to have these squares and look really, really bad. So if I make this 10,000 pixels, one of those squares is going to be like 100 pixels and it's going to look terrible to where the vector never loses resolution. Now, as I was saying, vectors is made with different shapes. So if I want to, I can take this vector apart in different pieces. So like the hair here, drag it over this way. The hair, an ear, hair stroke, color of that hair, fill layer for my face, hair colors, ear, ear path, ear stroke, hair stroke, hair stroke, and finally my head stroke another hair color right there. And each one of these is a path or a fill or a shape. So if we look at this, do my direct select tool here, we'll notice that it is a, it's one single path and a path is that red line you see down the center and it has a stroke on it. And what that stroke is, it means the stroke is basically X many pixels along that red line. And this is my stroke editor window, which you'll be losing, using and you notice the width right here is set to 13.097. It's set to an odd number because I stretched it and Inkscape automatically scales those, whereas Illustrator doesn't. I think you can get Illustrator to it, I'm not sure how. Um, anyway, so if I want to, I can set this to 40 pixels and it'll make it larger, or I can set it to 10 pixels and it'll make it smaller. So when you're vectoring an image, it's very important that you make sure that all of these widths are the same and that is what a stroke is, and then a fill is what this is right here. You'll notice that this has a red line going around the entire outside of it, that's because it is a shape made up of multiple points. And a point in Inkscape, or any vectoring program, is the little node right there that you have these drag bars that come out of it. And the drag bars affect the Bezier curves going in between the points. And a vector is made out of points, Bezier curves, and lines, and strokes, and shapes, of course. Um, in Inkscape and Illustrator, you can make a stroke like this, and then you can um, click. It's The shortcut is Control-Alt-C, which is path, um, stroke to path, and then it will turn that stroke now into a fill. And then you have your drag bars and your nodes, and you can edit them accordingly. And then in Inkscape, up here at the top, you can have a sharp node, which means that the bars are not locked. Or you can have a round node. Alrighty. And that is basically what a vector is made out of. Um, and all vectors are made out of like this. Well, and I, as I said, I will be going over 
um, how to vector in Illustrator and how to vector in Photoshop. In Photoshop, it's very important to note that you cannot use strokes. You can only use um, fills, something called the fill method. So if I go to my vector tool, the pen tool here, if I start going and making an object, it's it will only be an object with nodes and paths. And then you can only use that method in Photoshop. You cannot make a line and then stroke that line. It does not work. Um, Photoshop CS6, I believe, now has this ability, but I haven't been able to play with it, so I won't be teaching it. I'll be teaching the old Photoshop method that um, Orangel goes over in his tutorials. And just um, how, but I'll be doing it with my method. Okay, I'm going to go over the three vectoring programs, what they can or can't do, and what if we recommend them and why. Um, the first vectoring program that I'll be talking about in my little series here will be Inkscape. And Inkscape is the program that I recommend the most. Um, it works well, it's completely free, and it has the best edge resolution rate. Um, so it makes the nicest looking vectors when you export them. It, you can use strokes, you can turn those strokes into fills, you can combine objects, you can combine strokes, you can combine fills, and then everything is really intuitive, works well, and you can do almost about anything. It's a little bit limited when it comes to clipping. Um, I believe, I, I feel that Adobe programs use clipping better. Um, but for just making basic vectors, especially just basic vectors of pony, ponies, Inkscape will do everything you need it to, and it's completely free, so that's what I recommend, and I'll um, throw a link or a little button that you can click on to go to, go to my uh, Inkscape tutorial if you just want to skip ahead of that, ahead to that, in case, if you don't want to watch uh, this little intro video, I'll throw that right there. All right, and then our next program that I will be going over is Adobe Illustrator. And Adobe Illustrator is an Adobe program, so it has the Adobe user interface, and it's this program has the, the ability to make SVGs and the ability to use strokes, just like Inkscape does, and you can do stroke to path. It does pretty much almost, almost everything that Inkscape does, but it's a little bit less centered around making vectors. Um, but you, it, it still has all the capacities there, and it works just as well. Um, and it has the next highest edge resolution rate um, uh, Photoshop. In, resol in edge resolution, um, any end listing, it goes Inkscape Adobe Photoshop, I believe. But, uh, or Inkscape Illustrator Photoshop, excuse me. But um, Adobe Illustrator will still, again, do everything you need to make SVGs, use strokes, you can adjust stroke widths. I believe it has, when you it becomes a little bit problematic when you're using or vectoring because when you try to resize a vector within Adobe Illustrator, the strokes will stay the same pixelation. It won't scale those strokes when you scale your image. So if you have a vector that looks perfect and all of your strokes are set to 10 pixels and you're using the line width tool, um, and then you decide to stretch that vector to like 100 pixels, um, those strokes will stay the same width, and then they'll be super small when you uh, size out your paths. And but then to fix that, you have to stroke the path all of your strokes in Illustrator. So um, it, we have to turn all your strokes into fills. Rather, it's called a stroked path. Um, and then so then you can rescale your vector all you want, and then it works a little bit better in SVG format. And we re and I recommend doing that. I'll go over it again more in the, um, the tutorial. But uh, it it. It, it, it'll do everything you need it to as well. Um, everything that Inkscape will do. And um, it's the second best vectoring program, in my opinion. Um, and it does, it's, again, doesn't have any flaws. And I'll throw a link for that tutorial if you'd like to skip there now on, on the screen. All right, and then um, our third and last program is Adobe Photoshop. And Adobe Photoshop is by far the worst program to vector with, and I hate to admit that because Photoshop is what I learned, and it's the program I know the best, and it's um, what I used to teach, uh, help my teacher teach. I was a TA for teaching Photoshop. But uh, Photoshop, um, again, Photoshop, I, I feel Photoshop has the best clipping methods um, when you're trying to create clipping masks and clipping paths and sub subtract from paths and all those sorts of things. Photoshop is the most diverse program for make for clipping things, and it clips really well. Um, and you can use you can use clipping groups. You can you can copy and paste paths onto other shapes and onto other groups. And it's really diverse in that means when you're trying to clip things. But again, it cannot make SVGs, and you cannot use strokes. And as far as time goes, 
strokes will save you tons of time and as far as quality goes strokes will overall give you the best most show accurate quality when making vectors because you're not judging the width by hand and um so photoshop you can again you can make vectors and you can um, export your vectors to illustrator i'll go into that a little bit later but by far um you i recommend illustrator before photoshop and then an Inkscape before all the others because it has the most. I mean, it was built to vector, and it was built by the community specifically to make vectors. And again, it's free. Um, but here's a throw a little link right there for my Photoshop tutorial. You can click on that if you um, would like to learn Photoshop and the fill method and go into that more, more in depth. Another important thing that I would like to note um, when doing vectors um, is there's a there's a big difference in between being show accurate and then being true to the reference. When vectoring, I'm going to try to teach you the fundamentals and um, important techniques that you need to know when making a vector and how to make a vector show accurate. But, as I said, there's a big difference between show accurate and staying true to a reference. A lot of people will, will almost use the excuse of, I am trying to stay accurate to the reference, and I am trying to stick to my reference and be the most show accurate as possible. But again, being stubborn-headed and trying to do everything on that reference is completely different from show accurate. Show accurate means that um, that you are sticking to the the flavor of the show and the rule the show the rules by which the show is animated there are a lot of set rules by how the show animates and how characters are made and how um, the animation puppets for those characters are made in flash and staying true to that with how the show is actually animated is what it means to be show accurate but staying true to the reference is completely different than being what is considered to be truly show accurate. Truly show accurate means that all the paths are hidden, or strokes rather, strokes are hidden in the correct places, things are the correct colors, eyelashes and eyes uh, work the correct way, and limbs meet up in the correct order, but staying true to the reference means that you are just copying the screenshot word for word. There are a lot of things that the show does that are, one, animation errors, and then two, just ways when they're animating the puppets that break a little in how they're animated, and shortcuts that the animators make. Being show accurate means using a, like a screen capture from the show, and then making that screen capture better than the show itself, better than the animators of the show could. Um, that's what being show accurate is. It's abiding by the rules that the show would be abiding by um, at all times if it wasn't um, impossible to do that when vectoring puppets and animating. Um, that's what being show accurate means. So in these next three videos, I'm going to be first going over Inkscape, which is a free program, um, free open source program, so anyone can download it. And to do that, all you have to do is go to the internet and go to inkscape.org, not com, it'll be .org. And then right at the top right, latest stable version, download that, and then install it, and you can get started on my next tutorial. Alright, I hope you like my awesome video editing skills. I've never edited a video or anything like this before. This is the first time I've given it a shot. So, in my next two videos, I'm going to be going over how to vector in Photoshop, and then how to vector in Adobe Illustrator. Now, an important thing to note about vectoring in Photoshop is Photoshop is not a vectoring program. It's more meant to work with bitmaps, PNGs, and pixels. It's specifically designed about working with pixels. So, when you create a vector in Photoshop, you're using something called um, shape layers. And what shape layers are is it's basically a layer that Photoshop um, fills with a certain color. And then it clips that color with the path. So you're actually using a clipping, math, clipping mask on every single color that you make in Photoshop. How, and then Photoshop cannot export SVGs, and an SVG is a vector file. It is basically the point of making vectors. SVG stands for Shapeable Vector Graphic, and that's basically the point of Adobe Illustrator and the point of SVG is it can make 
or the point of Inkscape, excuse me, is they can both make SVGs, which are basically pictures that can scale, whereas PNGs made with pixels cannot. So Photoshop doesn't have the capacity to make an SVG. However, it can still make um, a image using shapes and clipping masks, clipping these color layers. And then if you make your vector out of those, you can transfer your PSD or your Photoshop document into Illustrator. However, Adobe Illustrator doesn't like to work with things like gradients and, and uh, certain clipping groups and things like that in Photoshop, but the colors from the shape layers will still transfer over into the objects in Adobe Illustrator. So you can make vectors in Photoshop and then save those PSDs and then upload them to things like the My Little Pony Vector Club and use those as your source files. And then people can take PSDs and then transfer those into Illustrator and then make them compatible for SVGs by um, con changing and converting the gradients and the clipping masks. And it's a little bit of work, but it still it counts as having most of the vector um, work there because most of the effort put into making that vector was tracing it and making um, the fills. And in Photoshop, you have to do you have to use something called the fill method because Photoshop cannot make a line and then stroke that line with X many pixels, 10 pixels, whatever. You have to um, trace around the, uh, the entirety outside of a stro stroke or a shape. So like if I have my rainbow dash here and I want to do her mane, I have to go around the her entire mane and I have to make the point, go here, make it, go here. And it's really, it's painstaking, and I have to go around the entire thing to where as if I wanted to make her body, I just have to make, you know, the outside line for her body, and then the line for her, lines for her legs, lines for the other her other legs, and then that's it. That's all I have to do. But in Photoshop, it forces you to go around the one side of the object you want, and then the other side of the object you want. This is the way I learned, and I highly recommend learning it, because it's an extremely important tool to learn, especially with things that you can't cheat on when using um, the stroke method. The show is made using strokes, so strokes are very intuitive when making characters. This character was actually made using the Photoshop um, fill method, and you can tell because if I go up here to the hair stroke, and I make a perfect little circle inside of here, it's just... <laughs> on, I got this. Uh, okay, I don't got this. Come on. Perfect circle. Move that. Alright, awesome. And, okay, this, is, this isn't working. Bear with me. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to redo this. Alright, so the circle is about the width of my line. Okay. So if I take the, this circle that I've made and then try to put it over another stroke. If you notice, uh, see how it's sticking outside of her chin there? That's because the stroke of her hair is way larger than the rest of her body stroke, when in actuality, it should be the same thickness. So if I go over here, it's a little bit closer, but still bigger, so it's really thick. But if I size it down, you'll notice that's about the stroke of, of her body. Even if I go to the stroke of her leg, see how it pokes out there? So her back stroke is thicker than her leg stroke. And that is the major problem when using the fill method in Photoshop, is it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice and a lot of skill to be able to get those lines to be the same thickness throughout. And it takes a really good eye. And you can use this technique that I just used, where you make a circle um, holding shift using your pen tool, uh, make a perfect circle inside of the stroke that you know to be the correct thickness, and then you use that circle to judge the rest of the thicknesses of the rest of your lines. Um, and that is a really good tip for that when using the fill method in Photoshop, if Photoshop is the only tool you have. But Inkscape is free, and that's why we recommend it, because you can use the stroke method. So especially with uh, newer vector artists, you don't have to worry about keeping stroke consistency in Photoshop. But I mean, if Photoshop is the program you know, it's, a photo it's the program you like, um, by all means, use that. Um, but know what you have to do to make it so you can communicate with things like Adobe. Uh, and then I'll go over those in their appropriate videos, what you need to do when. Um, anyway, and then in, when I talk about Adobe Illustrator, I'll talk about the Stroke Width tool, which is very, very useful, and you can, uh, it can be a very useful tool when trying to vector quickly. Um, and I'll get into that in its video, but Adobe Illustrator, as I said, has the capacity to work with SVGs, and, but it has a similar user interface to Photoshop to where the user interface to Inkscape is completely different. 
And also a very, very important thing to learn when vectoring in these three pro programs, or one of them specifically, is the hotkeys. I will be going over, or trying to go over um, very fluently, the hotkeys used in every program. But the user interface and hotkeys are, again, completely different from the programs, and it's taken me a long time to remember all those. So hopefully I'll do a good job in those videos. So anyway, I think that about sums it up. Uh, if uh, any of anything I've said in this short little intro video has confused you or aroused questions or whatever, you can go ahead and send your questions not through my YouTube because I do not uh, do you know, really check that inbox, but you can go to my um, DeviantArt page and you can note me there. Um, and I think I'll post up links to the tutorials in my favorites or whatever. But anyway, you can send me a note there with any kind of questions you have or questions um, pertaining to vectoring. And I'll try to help you or answer those questions the best way I can. Um, another thing before I end this video, a very, very useful place when learning to vector is a subreddit on Reddit uh, called My Little Pony MLP Vectors. MLP Vectors. And in MLP Vectors, you can post your vectors and ask for critique. When posting to the My Little Pony Vectors, make sure to include a tag in your post. So put uh, the little the little C right there in the middle of your word or at the end or whatever. Um, but it'll let those know, uh, or let us know, or people who uh, frequent this subreddit that you're looking for help and you're looking for help uh, and critiques in your vectors. Um, I just did this little critique a little while ago on uh, this gentleman's vector. Um, and you can get a lot of really um, useful help there and a lot of useful feedback and that way, um, if I can't help you um, or your question through DeviantArt. Hopefully you enjoy my tutorials, and hopefully um, uh, you think that they're well done. But um, again, I am Burned01, and I am a vector artist and a vector, vector critic, and also a vector inspector for the My Little Pony Vector Club, which is a DeviantArt group that is one of the largest DeviantArt groups that having to do with vectors, and we are also very picky and have very high standards for um, members who can join our group. And if you join our group, then you can submit vectors to our group. But we have very, very strict rules and high standards for vector artists. And we try to keep those because we are the largest resource for My Little Pony rela related vectors. And we for, and our group first is a resource for the community and then a showcase for art second. So if you are good at art or a good vector artist, we would love to showcase your art by all means. But to become a member of our group, you have to be good at vectoring and you have to know the basics and the fundamentals. And whenever you submit a vector to our group, it has to go through our quality control and it has to go through me and our other vector inspectors, which you can find on the left side of the page, um, who will go over and look or look over your submissions for, for vector errors and proper vector critique, and then ask you for things like SVGs because or work files because we are the vector club. If you don't have a work file or an SVG, it's not a vector, it's a PNG. And having everyone having to ask every other one of, for a vector or an SVG is just just not um, not good. It's just, that's just, it's just crazy talk. It's just, not, it's not reasonable to have to require those looking for SVGs or, um, re, or My Little Pony resources or vectors to have to ask the vector artists. So thousands of people go through our gallery and we have thousands of watchers. And if we didn't require people to include a vector, again, we wouldn't really be a vector club and it would be very difficult for people to get um, those, those source files or those vectors and then people could not get back to you or so on and so forth. So we have we have very strict submission rules for, for good reasons. If you are interested in joining our group, you have to have four to five show accurate vectors with um, an image preview that's a minimum of 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. I recommend at least 5,000 pixels because that allows people who are quickly just trying to get a picture of your vector or resource to be able to get that simply. and. Um, that is the majority of what how people use vectors is they just grab a very large PNG and then use it in their project or post or whatever they're working on. But we do re we require people to link SVGs and work files. And if people have legitimate reasons why they don't want to include SVGs or work files, um, 
it's too much. If it's too difficult or um, they're having problems uploading, or if uh, if it's like an original work or original style art and they don't want to share like their paths and things like that for the vectors, we sometimes make exceptions, but for the most time we have those requirements there because it's just unreasonable to have to get the person looking for the resource or the SVG or work file to have to ask the vector artist for it. But again, we have very high standards when you're trying to join. But it, but, but again, there's no. Uh, if you're looking to learn, hopefully these tutorials can help you, help you, and help you learn how to make proper show accurate vectors. And again, if you ever need critiques, um, you can always ask uh, me personally, and then you can ask any one of these vector inspectors. If you ask me and I'm too busy, I might send you to one of them. Um, and all of these vector inspectors would be more than happy to help you out. Um, with any of your submissions or with any vector that you're having problems with or programs. And then if that doesn't work, again, um, My Little Pony, or My Little Pony Vector, the sub, My Little Pony Vectors, the subreddit, is also a great place to get feedback um, if contacting one of us is taking too long or um, we haven't gotten back to you. And again, I hope all of this helps you, and I hope you learn a lot from my tutorials. And yeah, again, if you have any feedback, um, you, can, uh, you can check out my DeviantArt and let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching, and again, I hope you enjoy them.